Hello guys, when starting a new Laravel project, are there any things that you do right away after the installation? Some global configurations, some rules, some packages you prefer. In this video, I will list quite a few things that I prefer doing in my projects. And also I ask people on Twitter and on LinkedIn. And I've picked roughly 15 things altogether that you may want to do. Those are optional, but some of them highly recommended in your new Laravel project. Let's begin the list. So here I am in my fresh Laravel project. I've chosen view starter kit. I will show you why in a minute. And the first thing I usually do is install Laravel debug bar. So we do compose require and there will be a bar at the bottom to show n plus one query problems and other things for debugging. So we refresh the page and we see debug bar at the bottom. And the most common usage is, of course, looking at the SQL queries to avoid duplicated ones. If you're working with API project, which means non-visual, so there's nowhere to show Laravel debug bar. Instead, you can install Laravel telescope for debugging the queries. I have a few videos on my channel, one a bit older, one a bit newer, and I will link both in the description below. And now I've simulated that N plus one query problem. I've generated a model post with relationship and in the same dashboard homepage just before inertia render, just for testing, I've done this. And as a result, we have names listed here, and then we have 12 queries. So debug bar shows you the amount of queries. But how can we prevent the queries? In the boot method of app service provider, I always add model from eloquent and then should be strict. And it should be strict only on your local, not in production. So the condition is strict. If not, this app is environment production or there's even shorter than AI suggested there's is production like this. What does that mean? If we go inside of that should be strict, there's actually three functions inside here. And I mostly care about the first one prevent lazy loading. So instead of should be strict, you can also do prevent lazy loading directly in the boot. And now look what happens if I refresh that page. I refresh and I get an error. So I don't even have to look at the debug bar to see that too many queries. Laravel would actually flag that for me in the form of error. And this is the reason why it should not be enabled in production because this is kind of a warning for developer that there are too many errors, but the page itself should still work. So for production environments, your users should still see the page and you should be catching that warning locally. If you leave that without any condition, then your users would see 500 server error, which is probably not what you want for your users. Another thing that I do immediately is DB, facade autocomplete, prohibit destructive commands. And also with the same condition of this is production. So let's return those here as well. What does it mean destructive commands? What if you run PHP Artisan migrate fresh? That would re-migrate and reseed the database, right? But what if it happens on production? Now look what happens if I run my great fresh seed on my local database. It all works, right? But now in my .env, I'll change that to production, simulating the production environment. And now if I try to rerun that, there's a warning. This command is prohibited from running in this environment and it cancels the command. So basically that method is preventing from anyone to run these commands like migrate fresh, refresh, reset, roll back and wipe the database. And then the final thing I do with every Laravel project is prepare testing environment for automated tests. Even if you don't have tests right away, but in this case, we do have them with starter kit. And this was the reason why I installed starter kit. Any starter kit, it doesn't really matter if you or Livewire or React, they both have tests inside. So for example, there's dashboard test for testing that guests are redirected to login or authenticated users are redirected to dashboard. And as you can see, those tests use refresh database, which means that if you blindly run PHP artisan test right away, your whole database would be refreshed. And if you had some testing data, then you lose it. So immediately right away, we need to separate the database that tests would run on. This may be configured by default. So in Laravel 12, from what I understand, those two lines, PHP unit XML lines are activated automatically. Before Laravel 12, it was commented out. So by default, tests were running on your live database. So now for run PHP artisan test, it would be executed on SQLite database in memory, but you may also want to set up a separate MySQL database if you're working with MySQL. So connection would be MySQL. And then for example, you create a separate database 
with underscore test suffix, you create that database manually and run test on that one. But basically, no matter what you do, configure the testing database to avoid accidentally running the test and wiping your current database. And now let's read what people said on Twitter and LinkedIn, what they suggested, what they're doing in the beginning of their projects. One common theme was something related to IDE, so Laravel IDE helper, or for example, John optimized LLM instructions because he's probably using cursor as primary editor. Also, there could be xdebug configuration, maybe some VS Code configuration. Personally, I don't do that. I'm quite satisfied with default PHP Storm with Laravel IDEA plugin, but basically your goal is to prepare your IDE for more convenient work with the project. Next, many people mentioned Pint, or it could be PHP CS Fixer to apply the code styling for the project for yourself and for future developers. Pint is installed by default in Laravel, so you can go to Composer JSON and see that Pint is somewhere here. Yep. So you can run it right away and configure it right away, but you may want to change the configuration. So by default, the preset of Pint is called Laravel, but maybe you want to create your own Pint.json and apply other rules or other styling standard. Next, quite a few people mentioned PHP Stan or Laristan to perform static analysis locally or remotely with GitHub Actions. So this is another thing I do set up on almost every project, but not in the beginning, but a bit later when I push the first version of the project somewhere remotely. And I have a few videos about GitHub Actions on my channel, the stories from our own team, how we use them for testing and CI CD. So I will link those in the description below. Getting back to static analysis, it was mentioned, as I said, by quite a few people like PHP Stan. And if you want to learn Laristan in practice, we have a course on Laravel Daily. I will also link that in the description below. Also, if we talked about GitHub Actions when the code is running remotely, so let me mention two more things I do when I upload the project somewhere to staging server or live server. So I set up the bug tracking software. We use Bugsnack in our team historically. Now it was renamed to Insight Hub but also popular solutions are Sentry and Flare by Spati. They all will help to detect bugs, debug with all the information around that bug, and notify you when something bad happens. Those all are not free things, but totally pay off for peace of mind. And also, when I plan to have real data on staging or live server, I immediately install Laravel Backup and configure that to be running daily, and also after running it at least once, I test whether that backup actually works. And then I configure the backups to be on a separate server than the original application, usually somewhere on S3, which is easy to configure. And a few more things mentioned on Twitter and LinkedIn in a rapid fire way. So use class carbon immutable. It is probably a good thing, but personally, I very rarely touch with a situation where that would be practically useful. But if you work a lot with dates and you're afraid to perform wrong operation, you can configure that globally. Also, some developers use model on guard globally in app service provider, which means that you don't need to provide fillables in every model. For all the models, all the fields would be on guard. This is kind of unsafe because if you're not careful with your eloquent operations, some hacker may technically pass more fields and you would not guard them. But if you trust your eloquent operations, this may be a more convenient way, so-called lazy way to avoid writing fillables. Also, a few people mentioned Rector scripts and Rector in general here, along with PHP Stan. I don't have any videos on Rector on this channel. If you're interested in that, then put in the comments below, I will schedule that topic. Also interesting part, update stub files to match my preferences. So you can publish Laravel stubs for like make model, make controller and others and edit them according to your preferences in your projects. And then all the other artisan commands will use your stubs instead of default Laravel. I also have a video about how that works and I will link that in the description below. These are probably the main things. There are more, so I will link the tweet and LinkedIn post in the description below as well. So you can read all the comments about people's preferences. What are yours? Is there something that you do that I didn't mention in this video? I didn't pick something important. We can, as always, discuss in the comments below. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.